something is awry in our expanding cosmos. Nearly a century ago, the astronomer Edwin Hubble discovered the balloon-like inflation of the universe and the accelerating rush of all galaxies away from each other. Following that expansion backward in time led to our current best understanding of how everything began, the Big Bang. But over the past decade, an alarming hole has been growing in this picture. Depending on where astronomers look, the rate of the universe's expansion, a value called the Hubble constant, varies significantly. Now, more than two years after its launch, the James Webb Space Telescope has cemented the discrepancy with stunningly precise new observations that threaten to upend the standard model of cosmology. According to Adam Rees, a professor of astronomy at Johns Hopkins University who led the team that made the new James Webb measurements, it's a disagreement that has to make us wonder if we really do understand the composition of the universe and the physics of the universe. On this, many cosmologists can agree, it started with a bang. Then, in an instant, the young cosmos was formed, an expanding, roiling plasma broth of matter and antimatter particles that popped into existence only to annihilate each other upon contact. Left to their own devices, the matter and antimatter inside this plasma mire should have consumed each other entirely. But scientists believe that some unknown imbalance enabled more matter than antimatter to be produced, saving the universe from immediate self-destruction. Gravity compressed the plasma pockets, squeezing and heating the matter so that sound waves traveling just over half the speed of light, called baryon acoustic oscillations, rippled across their surface. Meanwhile, the high energy density of the early universe's crowded content stretched space-time, pulling a small fraction of this matter safely from the fray as the universe inflated like a balloon. The standard story goes, ordinary matter which interacts with light, congealed around clumps of invisible dark matter to create the first galaxies, connected together by a vast cosmic web. Initially, as the universe's content spread out, its energy density and therefore its expansion rate decreased. But then, roughly 5 billion years ago, galaxies began to recede once more at an ever faster rate. The cause was another invisible and mysterious entity known as dark energy. The simplest and most popular explanation for dark energy is that it is a cosmological constant and inflationary energy that is the same everywhere and at every moment, woven into the stretching fabric of space-time. Einstein named it lambda in his theory of general relativity. As our cosmos grew, its overall matter density dropped, while the dark energy density remained the same, gradually making the latter the biggest contributor to its overall expansion. Added together, the energy densities of ordinary matter, dark matter, dark energy, and energy from light set the upper speed limit of the universe's expansion. They are also key ingredients in the lambda cold dark matter, LCDM, model of cosmology, which maps the growth of the cosmos and predicts its end, with matter eventually spread so thin it experiences a heat death called the Big Freeze. Many of the model's predictions have been proven to be highly accurate. But here's where the problems begin, despite much searching, astronomers have no clue what dark matter or dark energy are. As Ofer Lohov, a professor of astronomy at University College London who was involved in galaxy surveys of dark energy, said, most people agree that the universe's present composition is 5% ordinary atomic matter, 25% cold dark matter, and 70% dark energy. The embarrassing fact is we don't understand the last two of them. But an even greater threat to the LCDM model has materialized, depending on what method astrophysicists use the universe appears to be growing at different rates, a disparity known as the Hubble tension. Methods that peer into the early universe show it expanding significantly faster than LCDM predicts. Those methods have been vetted and verified by countless observations. Therefore, as Rees said, the only reason that I can understand at this point for them to disagree is that the model that we have between them is perhaps missing something. Measuring the universe's expansion takes a little bit more than a radar gun. The first method to measure this growth looks at the so-called cosmic microwave background, CMB, a relic of the universe's first light produced just 380,000 years after the Big Bang. The imprint can be seen across the entire sky, and it was mapped to find a Hubble constant with less than 1% uncertainty by the European Space Agency's Planck satellite between 2009 and 2013. In this cosmic baby picture, the universe is almost entirely uniform but hotter and colder patches where matter is more or less dense reveal where baryon acoustic oscillations made it clump. As the universe exploded outward, 
this soap bubble structure ballooned into the cosmic web, a network of crisscrossing strands along whose intersections galaxies would be born. By studying these ripples with the Planck satellite, cosmologists inferred the amounts of regular matter and dark matter and a value for the cosmological constant, or dark energy. Plugging these into the standard model spat out a Hubble constant of roughly 67 km per second per megaparsec, a megaparsec is 3.26 million light-years. Let's pause on this number for a moment. If a galaxy is at a distance of 1 megaparsec away from us, that means it will retreat from us, and us from it, at 67 km per second. At 20 megaparsecs, this recession grows to 1,340 km per second and continues to grow exponentially there onward. If a galaxy is any further than 4,475 megaparsecs away, it will recede from as faster than the speed of light. A second method to find this expansion rate uses pulsating stars called Cepheid variables, dying stars with helium gas outer layers that grow and shrink as they absorb and release the star's radiation, making them periodically flicker like distant signal lamps. In 1912, astronomer Harrietta Swan Levitt found that the brighter a Cepheid was, the slower it would flicker, enabling astronomers to measure a star's absolute brightness and therefore gauge its distance. It was a landmark discovery that transformed Cepheids into abundant standard candles to measure the universe's immense scale. By stringing observations of pulsating Cepheids together, astronomers can construct cosmic distance ladders, with each rung taking them a step back into the past. It's one of the most accurate means that astronomers have today for measuring distances. Wendy Friedman, an astrophysicist at the University of Chicago, said to build a distance ladder, astronomers construct the first rung by choosing nearby Cepheids and cross-checking their distance based on pulsating light to that found by geometry. The next rungs are added using Cepheid readings alone. Then astronomers look at the distances of the stars and supernovas on each rung and compare how much their light has been redshifted, stretched out to longer, redder wavelengths as the universe expands. This gives a precise measurement of the Hubble constant. In 2019, the method was used by Rees and his collaborators, who trained the Hubble Space Telescope on one of the Milky Way's closest neighbors, the Large Magellanic Cloud. Their result was explosive, an impossibly high expansion rate of 74 km per second per megaparsec when compared to the Planck measurement. Yet Hubble lacked the necessary precision for the crowded regions of space the team was studying, causing some distant Cepheids to blur into neighboring stars. Dissenting cosmologists had some room left to argue that the result, however shocking, could have come from a measurement error. So when James Webb launched in December 2021, it was poised to either resolve the discrepancy or cement it. At 6.5 meters wide, Webb's mirror is almost three times the size of Hubble's, which is just 2.4 meters wide. Not only can James Webb detect objects 100 times fainter than Hubble can, but it is also far more sensitive in the infrared spectrum, enabling it to see in a broader range of wavelengths. By comparing Cepheids measured by James Webb in the Galaxy NGC 4258 with bright type IA supernovas, another standard candle, because they all burst at the same absolute luminosity in remote galaxies, Rees and his colleagues arrived at a nearly identical result, 73 km per second per megaparsec including one made by Friedman with the Hubble Space Telescope on the rapid brightening of the most luminous tip of the branch red giant stars and another with light bent by the gravity of massive galaxies, came back with respective results of 69.6 and 66.6 km per second per megaparsec. A separate result using the bending of light also gave a value of 73 km per second per megaparsec. Cosmologists were left reeling. According to Ryan Keeley, a cosmologist at the University of California, Merced, who has been working to explain the Hubble tension, the CMB temperature is measured at the level of 1% precision, and the Cepheid distance ladder measurement is getting close to 1%. So a difference of 7 km per second, even though it's not very much, is very, very unlikely to be a random chance, there is something definite to explain. The new result leaves the answer wide open, splitting cosmologists into factions chasing staggeringly different solutions. Following the Hubble Space Telescope result, an official attempt to resolve the issue at a 2019 conference at the Kavli Institute for Theoretical Physics, KITP, in California only caused more frustration. 
As David Gross, former director of the KITP and Nobel laureate, said at the conference, we wouldn't call it a tension or problem, but rather a crisis. But how things can be fixed is unclear. Reese is pursuing a tweak to the LCDM model that assumes dark energy isn't constant, but instead changes with time. He says that the simplest explanation is dark energy density increasing over time. For decades, models of quintessence fields of dark energy have followed this concept. Imagine a ball rolling down a hill, said Adam Rees. It's just rolling down a slope. Gravity makes the ball roll, but the ball itself has energy, a potential energy. To test the idea, Rees plans to continue building cosmic distance ladders using James Webb observations of Cepheids, calibrating type IA supernovas, which, due to their brighter luminosity, enable measurements over even larger distances and further back in time. He hopes to show whether the Hubble constant was lower in the past. Alternatively, perhaps the Hubble tension results from some unknown property of dark matter. Meanwhile, another faction of cosmologists believes a more radical change to the standard model is required, exploring possible impacts of higher dimensions and new gravitational theories. Alternatively, many of them argue that we need to focus on how we are analyzing the measurements. Of course, as Wendy Friedman said, astronomers have yet to rule out the possibility that their most reliable methods of probing the universe are flawed. It's possible there are systematic errors that we simply don't understand. More data will ultimately be necessary. Fortunately, more is on the way. Complementing James Webb, the European Space Agency's Euclid spacecraft launched this past summer. It will peer through a wider lens to study the effects of dark energy on galactic evolution, measuring the shapes of billions of galaxies in three dimensions across 10 billion light-years of cosmic history. Next year, NASA's Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope will offer a bird's-eye view of the universe's large-scale structure, focusing specifically on dark energy and dark matter. For Reese, the Hubble tension represents a chance to further refine what has been our most accurate model of the universe's history. As he said, I'm just as excited if the universe follows the rules as if the universe doesn't follow the rules.